It's only worth it if you work for it I won't stop till they hear me now I won't stop till I wear the crown In this video, guys, we're going to be diving down into the data for Bitcoin, the market leader, to see what has been going on with this most recent impulsive move to the upside. Is this something that is going to be sustainable or something that we should actually be concerned with, with more downside yet to come? As we get into this video, if you find it useful and informative, hit the like button. I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then do go ahead and subscribe. Tap the bell, select all notifications, and in doing so, you are going to be kept up to date with all the videos that we do here at Cheeky Crypto. Right, with all of that said, done and out of the way, let's jump on down into the desktop and take a look at what is going on here with BTC. Okay, guys, we're going to really start off by taking a look at our weekly uh, well, actually, our hourly chart to start with, really. We'll start with the hourly and then we'll work our way up to the weekly. Um, so here we have our hourly chart and we can see that this is an impulsive move, right? Um, basically, effectively starting from down this low point, um, effectively at about 2 a.m. on the 31st of January. OK, from here, we saw a good push up and this was actually tracking just as a regular ABC. Nothing unusual uh, until we got down to this point here. And then we started to see a good surge to the upside, triggering an impulsive move to the upside. Now, the important thing to remember here is it's pretty much just following the stock market at this point. It was um basically in line with what was going on with the S&P 500, etc. Um, so this move to the upside here is impulsive and therefore um, one of two things were likely to happen, okay? And um, we were either going to pull back down lower than wave one or we were going to push on up, okay? Um, basically after we've pulled back down into this fourth wave low, okay? So obviously, hopefully a lot of you guys are familiar with Elliott wave and those impulsive moves. Basically an impulsive move is it, it consists of five waves um, to the up or downside. It doesn't matter which direction. It's impulsive impulsive in either way. Uh, in this particular example, we have an impulsive move up. Okay, so we're moving one wave up, two waves down, not crossing the origin position, then push up into wave three, and then we pull back down into wave four, and then wave five. Now wave four is not allowed to cross wave one. And in this case, that's fine. And wave five is usually at least um, at least 1.618 of the previous move, which would be wave four here. Okay. Um, so for the most part, um, everything here for Elliott Wave has been uh, ad adlined to, right? So we actually take a measurement of our first wave, we transpose that over into wave two, we crossed the 1.382, we crossed the two, uh, the 1.618, and effectively we went up um, pretty much to the 2.618 area before getting rejected. Uh, I actually think that lines up a little bit neater, so maybe I haven't actually drawn this as accurately as I would have liked. Let me just check. Um, Effectively, actually, yeah, I'd probably take it from. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll take it from there. It's probably changed a little bit over those hours. Um, yeah, so almost a, a two point six one eight. So, uh, effectively, a very impulsive move in line with the stock market, right? So we had that real good impulsive push to the upside. Um, and again, if you're in our Patreon, in our Discord, you'll know uh, that I called out you know, 39,100 earlier this morning before it actually hit that target. Uh, and that is, of course, the 1.618 minimum threshold that we would expect with a uh, with a fifth wave, right? So and you kind of see that right there. And so um, I think I was probably doing it around here saying that that's the most probable area and um, that we're likely to go to. And of course, you know, uh, this is in line with that stochastic RSI and the fact that we're heavily oversold. And um, so what do we see right now? What's actually going on? Well, there's a couple of things here that I think are really important that we have to acknowledge on the smaller time frame before we kind of go into the larger time frames. And um, so the first thing we have to acknowledge here is we are after completing this impulsive move to the upside, we should expect an A, a B and a C. OK, now whether this B wave's finished, I don't know just yet. Obviously, this is on the current current hour that we're currently set on um, you know so it could push higher etc but what I'm going to do is I'm going to just clean this up a little bit and then see if we can actually find um, some interesting areas for us right so I'm going to remove the fib um, from here and what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a new Fibonacci retracement tool I'm going to take it from the top and I'm going to bring it down to the bottom here and we can see here that we actually just got rejected from the 702, 786, this is the area of rejection that you would expect. Let's hypothetically say that the area of rejection comes in here at uh, 38,854. Okay, so effectively what you end up with is an A wave down, a B wave coming up a little bit higher than we've currently seen so far, and then we should pull back down. Now, if we transpose this over to that B wave high, 
it gives us an approximate sea wave target here of about 37,700. Okay, um, again, it's a real minor ABC correction, but it's something that we should expect to see. Now, it's also very possible that we're actually starting a new trend to the upside here. And if I actually go down into the smaller time frames, like a 15 minute uh, time frame, uh, we might actually see there's an ABC just inside this motion to the downside here as well, and um, before actually setting that next set. Now, it doesn't look like that on the 15 minute. It actually looks pretty consistent with that pullback that I've just explained. And um, so we should potentially be looking at some kind of downward action here um, very briefly before we actually, you know, finish that one off and then still look for, for the next move to the upside. So um, with this chart, the other thing that's really important that we understand or have to understand in terms of Elliott wave is what is the most likely outcome next, right? So we know that there is a, a potential C wave to the downside that we are expecting. That's the most probable. doesn't mean it's going to happen, but it means it's the most probable outcome here. Okay, with that being said and completion of an ABC move, the fact that we've had five waves up, we've potentially are gonna have three waves down, it means that we wanna be watching out for another impulsive move to the upside, okay? Because we could be on track here for a much larger play, right? Which is what we want. Um, so let's jump back down into the charts here and just go through a little bit of kind of thought pattern as to what might actually happen. If we have our A, our B, and our C coming down, um, the next thing that we want to be watching out for is an impulsive break with an ABC to the upside. Okay, so let's say we have a small wave one, find this rejection point here with wave three, uh, a small pullback with wave two, and then we go impulsive again with a third wave. Okay, and again, we would have to measure this distance um, from the top of wave A to the beginning of wave A, transpose it over into the bottom of wave B, and we want to make sure that we're above the 1.618, and we want to make sure, well, 1.382, and we want to make sure that we kind of aiming for that 1.618 with this third wave this impulsive move of course 1.618 2.618 we don't know where that's going to go um but again you know hypothetically if we just say there effectively what this is uh, is actually a one a two a three we'd expect the fourth wave and then we push up again okay and then we'd end up with another a b and c down and then this should lead us into another one two three four and five now this is really important because if this is the pattern that we're, we're following and we do actually have this impulsive breakout for Bitcoin, then we have to understand that this actually could then be on track for invalidation of the $31,000 target that we can see on the large time frames. OK, so although this is a lot of speculation, a lot of kind of uh, thought pattern that hasn't actually kind of played out yet, it's important that if this pattern does play out, it means invalidation and we've actually seen the bottom here for BTC. OK, so we want to be monitoring this situation relatively carefully to kind of make those right calls right and um, so i'm going to clean this up we obviously have the idea that then we are potentially looking impulsive up okay so i'm going to just tidy uh, tidy some of this up and really focus in right now on this abc move down um, and then obviously we'll have to see if it's just an abc up or impulsive up impulsive up is going to be the really good sign for bitcoin that stochastic rsi would support such a move as well okay but again stock market is kind of leading the pack here um whatever's happening in the stock market is kind of happening here with bitcoin as well at the moment now these kind of synergies um, between the stock market and cryptocurrencies they don't happen often they don't actually stick around for too long and there's no long-term synergy between them um, but sometimes they correlate incredibly well together and i think here for bitcoin what you actually have is this synergy between the s&p 500 for example um, and bitcoin specifically because institutional level investment um coming in and out of the markets and less retail investors currently in bitcoin and um, because it's kind of parked off they've been liquidated or whatever right so right now we're very cautious of the fact that these two things are linked but eventually bitcoin's going to get some traction to it once it reaches this key level uh, which i'm going to go into now I'm going to jump up into our, our daily view for this one, guys, because it is important that we understand that there is this bigger play right here, right? Um, effectively talking about $31,000. I've been talking about it for a while, um, probably so much so that you, you're completely bored of me saying $31,000 Bitcoin. Um, but nonetheless, this is a play that hasn't been invalidated yet. So therefore, we have to be very aware of it. We have our ABC coming down here, right? And um, this one here actually invalidated at uh, or invalidates at uh, 39,700. Um, and I don't think we've actually got that one just yet. So I've got a green, uh, yellow line just on here. Effectively, this is an ABC down. Once we actually cross that level, uh, 39,600. Um, we'll call it 39,700 to be safe. Cross that level there. And, and what we'd end up with is an invalidation of a 
um, $31,500 Bitcoin, as in the Z-Wave fell short of our target, um, which was $32,000, which, you know, for the most part is incredibly close to the target anyway, right? So um, we have to be open-minded about that. And um, so obviously with this coming down a bit, if we cross this level here, it invalidates this move. It doesn't invalidate is the larger play, okay? And the larger play is actually really visible on the weekly chart, okay? It's a big A, B, C down. Um, so we are looking at a couple of different levels here. We really want to see this level here at about $42,000 get taken out um, and that's a, another daily move here with an ABC an AB and C okay in this C wave that we're actually looking at we're, we're in right now is an ABC in itself that could have completed um, a little bit higher than our $31,000 right so for that one to be confident that we're kind of out of this ABC move we want to be looking out for that $39,700 a push past this wick here of this A wave low at $42,000 completely invalidates another $31,000 price target getting hit here that's two out of three then becoming invalidated which means there's only one left on our chart here that's actually indicating $31,000 and that one actually requires a new all-time high in order to actually invalidate so we're actually looking for two things and we're incredibly close to those we're looking for $39,700 to get above that level invalidating our first Elliott wave count down to $31,000 and then we're looking for $42,000 if we get past $42,000 that invalidates two out of the three that are indicating $31,000 effectively what this means it gives us a lot more confidence in the market to say that two-thirds of the indicators that we're using here to indicate $31,000 have been invalidated and therefore there's a higher probability that we are not going to go down to $31,000 right and um, so really important that we understand that we are just running in a, a world of probability here and um, using these technical indicators and technical know-how in terms of Elliott wave and the counts of the waves to kind of help us understand where things are most probably going to go. And um, so right now we're in a really good position here for Bitcoin. Now, as I come back up into our weekly chart, um, what we actually have is that triangular, that um, not triangular, the um, a zigzag pattern is the word I was looking for, if I could actually think for a day. Um, so yeah, so we have a, a basically a, a zigzag pattern here, this sideways trade. This actually makes me think that we haven't left our fourth wave just yet. Okay, uh, basically from the highs that we had in April down to the lows in June, uh, effectively is our first wave. And then we have a wave B actually setting the new all time high at $69,000, slightly higher than origin, but that's allowed in a zigzag. And then we pull back down, completing at about $31,000. In order for this to be invalidated, we have to set a new all-time high. Okay, so this one's obviously the, the one that we're not going to be validating unless, of course, you know, we're up in new all-time highs. Um, and of course, you know, we can acknowledge that, you know, if we actually break down the daily and we actually push past $42,000, then there's a high probability that we're just not going to go down to $31,000. Higher probability and then obviously a lot more confidence coming back into the market for Bitcoin. Um, so overall, the market's actually looking really encouraging for Bitcoin. Bitcoin and also you know for the rest of the crypto space with that being said most coins are looking for a good push up but we shouldn't necessarily FOMO in until we've taken out a few of these key areas out right because we want to make sure that we're confident in it we don't want to come up to about like $41,000 get rejected and go down to $31,000 and uh, you know potentially be buying in a little bit too early so we do want to make sure we actually have those invalidations occur before we get actually get that confidence to come back into the market once we actually cross past $42,000 I would expect a little bit of volatility, some gains to be taken, a little bit of a pullback and a fantastic buying opportunity to be had afterwards. So guys, I'm going to leave the video there. Hopefully you have found it useful and informative. If you have hit the like button, I really do appreciate that. If you happen to be new to the channel, then do go ahead and subscribe, tap the bell, select all notifications. And in doing so, you are going to be kept up to date with all of the videos that we're doing here at Cheeky Crypto. With this said, done and out of the way, I hope everyone has a fantastic day and I'll catch you all in the next one.